Express. But talking about tickets, we got a ticket to the gun show here. We got draft number one coming up. Picks and bands going down. We have LGD on the blue side, RA on the red. We already see some very strong junglers being picked away from RA, from Leanne. That Nidalee, the Lilia as well, the Hecarim by RA, so they don't want to deal with that pick anymore. The Thresh as well, banned away from LGD. Yeah, this Nidalee has been banned against RA like 40% of the games yep. that they've played. Uh, this is a, a Leanne special. Not surprising to see that banned at all. Tristana, less about... I mean, iBoy has played a lot of Tristana, not to take anything away from iBoy, but this is also becoming somewhat of a meta ban. We're seeing a lot of teams starting to yeah. ban things like this Tristana because it can really take over the lane. But what that's allowing for is things like this Kai'Sa making it through the draft. So mm -hmm. that could be something we get to see from Kramer here, where you could just go for the first pick on the Kai'Sa. But then again, <laughs> the opposite side of that coin is that things like the Udi, things like the Olaf come through. So. The Kais is going to be banned by RA, and that Udu we were talking about is locked in. So now, thinking maybe a, a jungler and a support for RA. What do you do, though? There's no Hecarim. We don't get the Udi or Hecarim matchup. Oh, but that's the next best thing coming through. Hola. I know he got a couple <laughs> a couple nerfs coming through the 11.5, but he's still so strong and still a very, very prominent jungler right now in that farming meta and that strong meta. So it will be Olaf yeah. for Leanne. And so now you've still got a couple picks coming through in the, in the first phase right now for both sides. It's Gragas that's actually going to be picked up by okay. RA. So while Cube hasn't played a ton of Gregus this split, I, I think it's still fine because it's a flex pick, right? You could send that mm -hmm. down to the bottom lane. Hung's played it four times. You've had Cube play it a couple of times. Um, so it, it's a very flexible pick. It's good to have in your early draft. Do you see the Rel and Oriana locked in? So Uniboy wanting a very safe mid lane matchup. Uh, it's also somewhat of a takeaway from Fofo. Fofo has definitely been leaning towards the Oriana a lot. It's his most played of the split. Mm -hmm. um, it does mean that your AD carry pick is going to be late on in the draft, but we could see the same thing from RA. If they opt to go in for a mid lane matchup, especially with the early Oriana pick, I feel like you're... there's the potential that your mid lane pool gets pinched here, so I like the Victor yeah. lock-in just to make sure that you're not getting back. And I love it as well, get a little bit of change up. So I feel like we've been getting a lot of that bot lane focus, the jungle focus in the first phase of, of picks and bans. And now we're getting the, the solo lane focuses coming through at least a little bit here. So very interested what these kind of last bans are going to be. I was expecting some more ADCs. We already see Callista taken off. That Alistair has to go as it's one of the strongest champions right now, at least most pick champions in the LPL in general. And, and so you're trying to dwindle down some of these pieces, some of this bot lane pressure that can be available for, for RA and for LGD. And this is kind of strange to see RA without either bot. I mean, the Gragas could be a bot laner, right? It could Let's be, assume yeah. that that's a top laner for the time being. It, it's weird to see them uh, delaying their bot lane matchup so late into the draft and obviously wanting to have a count pick. I'd expect them to go for their AD carriers, their fourth pick once the band's come through. Um, and then go towards uh, something of a, a cat pick for the support. So things like the Zaya mm -hmm. is still available. Things like the Jinx as well that we've been seeing creep into the meta a little bit. The Vayne, we've seen Jinx. a couple of players playing more recently. So there are definitely still options available for this bot lane of RA. Yeah, there, there definitely is. And we got to see that Lucian ban away from RA. Solo lane uh, pressure being taken away there as well. The Scion ban last for LGD. So they thought a little bit more focused towards that top lane, that solo lane pressure. This uh, is going to mean a lot for what they want to go for, at least in the top lane for LGD. I would like to see Cult getting a little bit of tools up there, maybe to deal with Q. But it is iBoy's Vayne coming in here for RA fourth pick. All right, so huge amount of scaling on the side of RA. I like what they're going with here. Vayne, definitely a pick that can be punished very heavily by specific picks. Um, Kramer, known for... These uh, late game AD carries, Jinx is definitely going to take that box. Vayne does not have a fun laning phase against Jinx. You can just no, spam Pow Pow all day long. Also, Cult, he's played plenty of the Jace this series. I mean, everyone's been playing a ton of the Jace, right, <laughs> this season. It's a very safe blind pick as well when you don't know where the Gragas yeah. is going. But he has a good matchup into Gragas. And then we just need an aggressive support coming out from RA. You know, Rel was banned, Alistair was banned, but things like the Leona, still available. There's a lot of options here. Or you can still just send the Gragas down to the bottom side as well. And that's what I was thinking. That could be the play here. We can go with something a little bit more top focus in the on the later part of the draft, trying to get cubes and tools. They get the Wukong too. So it's gotta be that Gragas and bot lane with the Vayne. Gonna be an interesting matchup against the, the Rel Jinx, especially, as you said. Vayne not gonna have the greatest time, but that Gragas can help a little bit with that. 
Yeah, so Cube going with the Wukong. This is one of the picks that actually Cube impressed a lot of people with last year. When you think, mm. I know this is a long time ago. When you think <laughs> back to like early last year in the Masia Cup, Wukong was one of the picks. Um, and, and and sorry, I'm getting my I'm getting myself muddled there. The rework wasn't that early on. Uh, but since the rework, Cube uh, made a bit of a name for himself on the Wukong. Very, very good into these matchups where you can use your clone to, to dodge a lot of that damage in the trade. So. Looking into this game, though, RA with this vein in the bottom lane. We talked about this volatile bot lane with Iboy yeah, and Hung. Did. Having a vein is, it can be very feast or famine during the laning phase. So hopefully for them, they can get that going. But that'll be the question because LGD will look to shut that down. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about that bot lane, how that's going to kind of work out. You do have Chance and Kramer on the other side, so you know, nothing to shy at there on that side. But for me, and as it has been so true here recently, we've got a lot of strength with the Soul Willings, but it's the junglers here. Quay, we've got Lian, we've got strong, aggressive junglers, in-your-face junglers, some skirmish potentials across the board, especially against that Udyr, against that Olaf. I want to see how they get the game rolling for these sides. I want to see where that focus is going to be for either squad, because that is going to be so important. Yeah, it feels like for LGD, they've got to focus towards the top side. Right, with the Jinx, you don't necessarily want to be fighting early and what we've seen historically from lgd is that they like to leave kramer to just farm it up if they can yeah. they love to try and play the opposite side of the map to kramer so that he can just be funneling a ton of gold onto these late game ad carries um, we'll see if lgd get to enact that game plan though because oh actually kramer's in trouble <laughs> you got to see that beautiful skybox for a second as we hit summoner's rip for the first game of this day and it's looking no like way, a bad dive. time for kramer munchables why they gotta do this oh, to no, him i boy takes the tower fofo gets the kill and first blood <laughs> under a minute for ra what? They just did a level one tower dive, dive. and got away with it. That is not allowed. That's not I what's meant to happen taking. in League of Legends. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. That, that's how to turn this on its head right now, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, the game has begun. The game has very much begun. So, Fofo getting the first kill. Very nice. He gets a corrupting potion and a tear. We can take another look. I mean, Iboy just gets caught out. Uh, yeah, there's no way. Him. One thing that we can say on the side of LGD is at least they got a bunch of summoners, right? Hung has no summoners. Eyeboy has no heal. The ghost from Lian as well. So maybe there's an opportunity there for Quay to punish that, but he's going to be starting on the bottom side. So you expect him to path up to the top lane. Lian spotted on this ward as I'm not sure who on LGD, but somebody stepped into the jungle while all the shenanigans were happening on the bottom side. So... Kramer and Chance have this information. They know that Lian is starting up on the top side. They know that there's a very real possibility he goes for a play on the bot side at about three and a half minutes. So let's just watch out when we get to that point, what Lian does and how LGD responds. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest thing, is, is keeping an eye on where that pathing is going to lead, where we're going to see that focus that we were kind of highlighting to before getting into this match especially. But, man, it, it is a, a very quick way for RA to start that chaos that we were building them up for, especially when you're diving under tower level one. And I want to see them keep that pace up. I want to see them be able to handily take this early game away from LGD. And, and that's going to be a lot on the back of Leanne now. And I have to say, like, we're talking about the chaos from RA. The dive was actually kind of clean. I'm not going to lie for a level one tower dive. It's hard to pull that kind of stuff off, but they managed to juggle the aggro beautifully. Um, and again, RA, I feel like there's a narrative that the, this team inevitably has to fail eventually, right? That seems to be the underlying narrative that's been going around a lot of the time. Um, and it feels like the longer this win streak has been going on, the more... Uh, clean some of these wins have become and yes the team fighting is messy yes it's, it is a lot down to mechanical outplays but we do have talent on this roster that can pull yeah. these mechanical outplays off against the best we absolutely do and you get to see it shining through as uh you know your, your crunchables your math that you're you're doing is, is coming out good here as quay is looking at that top side looking to get cube under tower they're gonna commit uh -oh. the tps too we're getting a little action a little smorgasbord up here cube is surviving though the damage quay has to flash out and that is an unfortunate beginning here to lgd's plan of attack 
as they wanted to capitalize on top lane. They wanted to commit all these tools there. Uniboy might still find it. He's taking a couple extra tower shots. They're going to fully oh, die. They the turn back missed. around. Colt gets the kill, and they are going to clean up a double kill for the Jace. LGD oh, ho, ho. go up in this, in this game. By the skin of their teeth, they pull off oh, the dive. No. Hung wants oh. to punish. This is what we talked about. He's this guy loves to roam. Yeah, the tower He's is going to blow it, it off. <laughs> All right, so good stuff from Hung there. Uh, tied a little bit of delay between us, I fear. So apologies <laughs> yeah. if one of us are a little bit of talking over each other. But yeah, Hung, really, really intelligent roam to go up towards the top side there, seeing the play happening from LGD. Really great dive, though. I want to go back to the initial dive. Mm -hmm. LGD, it looks like it's a little bit botched. This is one of the strengths of having the Wukong pick, being able to turn invisible in those situations so that they can't uh, pull the play off. But then Uniboy re-engages it, Colt able to follow up. They're able to find a play off the back of it. In the meantime, Lien did not make the play towards the bottom side. He instead just went for the bot scuttle and reset. So uh, he'll, uh, and then went up towards the top side as we saw. So, yeah. Um, really now we're in this position where it's kind of even across the board, but Colt getting two kills will make this top lane very difficult for Q. Definitely will as we're going to look at that replay. Look at that dive that uh, LGD wanted to pull off a little bit there, but they decided to recommit. They spent so much time up there that they wanted to pull something away, and Uniboy able to keep them there, keep that poke down. Just goes so well. And at, at least the uh, tower aggro is already there for Uniboy, so it comes cleanly afterwards for LGD. And that phase rush coming through from Quake. Yep. Absolutely <laughs> clutch in the last second. He would have took another tower shot if it weren't for that phase rush. So just about gets out by the skin of his teeth. And it's good to see this. LGD leading in an early game after that dive. It's a fantastic look because, again, this is a team that have been incredibly lackluster this split. And it feels like even when they have made proactive plays, it's the mechanics haven't been quite there. The coordination hasn't been quite there. So pulling off a tower dive like that and then being confident enough to go for the re-dive and make that happen feels really good to see LGD doing that. Leando. We'll be able to go for this Drake. Obviously, it has a massive push in that bot lane off of the early lead uh, that they managed to grab for themselves. The opposite side of the board, though, you can see Quay was invading, dropping some deep vision because he's the one with the top side cryo. 1v1 in the mid lane, though. Yeah, Fofo got a decent amount of damage there. It did burn that Chaos Storm, but it was uh, Uniboy having to run away to, to his potential help there from Quay that was waiting in the jungle. But I like this, this movement from RA. I like the Dragon pickup on the Olaf, and now... Leyen is up here at the top lane to respond to this potential dive here, and I like this a lot. They haven't seen him just yet, but Quay will finally find him out. See if they want to commit. They realize that they could so, be in a, a sticky situation there, and they pull out. Yeah, and correct decision to pull out there from LGD, because we just watched Uniboy get punished and bullied out of that mid lane. Uniboy mm -hmm. had to reset. So Fofo could just shove that wave underneath the tower. Obviously, that gets him a small CS advantage, but it also would have mean meant if... LGD committed to that dive. Fofo could move up. He could clean up stragglers. Even if LGD get the kills, they're definitely going to be low off the back for tower dive. So good decision not to not to commit to that one, especially with Lien there. Uh, and it does mean that RA just get the small advantage of, of being able to bully out in that mid lane. So now when we look at the scoreboard, uh, mm -hmm. we need to kind of take a second here and take stock of what's actually gone on. Because obviously Fofo got that first kill of the game. He's now got a bit yeah. of barrier. He's going to be tanky as... Uniboy roaming up to the top side. He won't find an opportunity here, but Q, <laughs> man, trying, 20 though. CS down, two kills down. This is going to be, like, look at the item difference. Yeah, Serrated deck so and nice. two long swords against a Doran shield and a ruby crystal. Now he's just heading back to base and he's picked up, <laughs> he's sheet, got a picked sheet up some now. armor. But <laughs> yeah, man, that is, that is a really, really rough matchup for him. It is. And, and what I love right now from LGD is they know that. They know where their strength is right now. They're trying to focus that top side, but RA are looking to that bot side. That focus, that primary carry position for them. And they have the Ragnarok coming down. Leanne wants the kill on the Kramer. Kramer getting <laughs> low, and go. that is it. He's just running them down right now, Munchables. <laughs> he will die to that tower shot, but they still are able to get a couple kills, a couple responses for Rare Adam on the bot side of the map. Man, I love watching Leon play things like the Olaf. I love that he just committed to that. He was like, look, I'm dying to the tower, and I'm okay with that because I'm grabbing a double kill before I do. Like, he's okay taking the kills because the eye boy is going to get this wave for free. He'll probably get a tower play as well. Like, you're happy to give the early kills to Olaf anyway. Olaf is so good at just snowballing out of control in the game. In the meantime, Quake grabs the Herald. That top mm -hmm. tower is pretty low. They've already shown a huge prevalence to playing towards this top side this game, so... 
I wouldn't be too surprised to see them just maybe move Uniboy up, threaten another dive, slam the Herald, yeah. and try and take that first tower. And honestly, it's where I'm uh, even more impressed with Leanne here, right? He he has been there to respond in certain moments, at least the one moment up there when they were trying to dive cube yet again. But he's he's changing it up a little bit. He's going towards this bot side as well, then revisiting the top side. We're going to look at that, that dive, I guess, it turns out to be at the end of the day. The mechanical prowess of <laughs> mashing Q and E while yeah. right-clicking. It is oh, it's so truly good. something to behold. But, you know... Gets the base with 1,400 gold. Not too shabby for Leanne. You can see he's already got the Iron Spike whip. And he's got himself boots. So now, with a jungler this accelerated, there's already an Olaf and a winning bot lane. You just know that in a minute and a half, RA are going to be trying to brute force that second Drake as well. It's going to be difficult for LGD to really contest that one. Because Jace, not, not a pick that you go uh, for like early dragons, right? You want to have... Yeah. The the pressure on the top side. You can see Quay now moving up, slamming the Herald in the top side like we talked about. They can just threaten the dive onto Q and it means the Cult can grab a bit of extra gold. So with this tower going down, you know, I said that Jace isn't a pick you can go for early Dragons with, but actually with the lead that he has, having taken that tower, it's possible that they could just reset on the top side, move him over to the Dragon and try and force this. Yeah. Injury. I guess that's my biggest question at this point, right? For LGD, yes, they've got oh, they even get a second charge on top side. That's gonna be really nice. Hey, LGD, how do you use this 2 OJs, right? How do you find that advantage to the rest of the map? And they do force out the Ragnarok from Leanne there. That's gonna be a decent cooldown use for that next fight, but it's still Kramer getting caught by that casket. Vayne getting stunned up there by the nice charge from Chance, but he's still gonna chase down Kramer. Kramer's gonna die, and iBoy secures a kill. 1-0-2 oh, on this vein, and it is looking real good for the RA bot lane. Man, Kramer is having one of the worst splits of his career. This has been really crazy to me, man. Yeah, we were waiting for the Visa to come in at the start of the year. We were saying, you know, once once Kramer's hit, that's when LGD will look great. It'll, it'll look better once Kramer arrives. It has not looked better since Kramer arrived. Like, losing the 2v2 in the bot lane pretty much every game, it, it is really not a good look for LGD at this point. And R8, you've got to feel like they're probably going to be in an advantage and fantageous advantageous position if i can speak <laughs> to try and contest this drake looks like the reset from fofo but two tps available right now if they wanted to commit seems like yeah. lgd though are going to be able to grab this one i guess Both uh have Leanne, there, with I'm no rag to. ragnarok decided to back away from this one i feel like you could have forced a double tp there from ra but i understand respecting it uh oh, the since i was on the fade as well and also the condemn back yeah, it didn't go into the wall, but being able to get Kramer even further away from Chance, and at that point they're so split up that like there's nothing that Kramer can do. He just tries to get a little bit of damage back. So good pickup though for LGD to grab this straight. Does delay that potential win condition from RA, but we do have to visit uh, what's happening in the bot side a little bit here and compare our AD carries because both Vayne and Jinx we know uh, scale exceptionally well, but hang on, Uniboy. Might just I, die I'm, here. I was hoping okay. for just the Ragnarok pop and go all in again, but he decides to temper that aggression a little bit this time around. It would have been a little bit trickier than that bot lane dive there. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it before, right? Leanne, yeah, now, we have. He That's knows why I, I was holding big. my breath. It's just, yeah. yeah. He, he knows he's big. He knows he can just start to bully people and uh, go wherever he wants on the map. Colt knows the exact same, though. On the yeah. top side of the map, you can see him grabbing this red buff because we knew where Lien was, right? Everyone saw Lien in the mid lane, so Colt has the freedom to go for that invade. And honestly, RA, are, right now they're saying, okay, Q, you're totally on your own. Just try and farm it up. Try and not die. That's all we can ask for you. The question is, what can Lien do elsewhere on the map? If they are going to yeah. abandon that top side, if they're not going to play towards that, you need to start getting some ganks through on towards iBoy. As I was saying, the, the AD carries do scale uh, reasonably well each, but when we get to two items, it's a huge, huge spike for Bane these days. Uh, ooh, good flash from Fofo. Yeah, he's about to have um, a is... lot used on him right there, but luckily he flashes. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a, a two, two item spike is massive for Bane these days, so certainly earlier in the game than you would previously expect from a Bane pick. And I, I just start seeing this Jinx and, you know, Jinx, ooh, I, I'm going to hold my point because uh, Cube goes in with the help of Leanne up in the top. Colt flashes, but the flash does come out from Cube. Can he get the re-stun, the re-engage? It's not going to come out. 
So you do get the flash from Colt, but you use a decent amount of tools in top lane from RA. They're just trying to get something back up there. Yeah, I don't know what that flash from Cube was. He <laughs> he flashed to get a Q onto Colt yeah. and just did like 100 damage. It was like, okay, uh, that that feels like a bit of a waste of uh, a bit of a waste of a flash coming out from Cube. But there you go, uh, unlucky situation for him. Unfortunately, no gank coming out or no. No, no return on the gank from Lian there. We'll buy a little bit of space with Cube on the top side, though. Drake in two minutes, though. That's what we've got to be looking for uh, for RA. And you can expect them to start to blast open these big chaotic fights. But LGT are looking good in this game, honestly. They're a 1,000 gold ahead. The big issue for them is obviously Kramer, 0 and 3. But actually, in yeah. CS, he's still doing okay. He's got a Kraken Slayer. He's still going to be Jinx, right? He's still yeah. crit AD carry. So him being slightly behind in the early game is not the end of the world for LGD. They know it. They're going to start off the hell. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. Use that lead that you've gotten for Colt. Use that top lane advantage that you, you've accrued for yourself and be able to get some of these objectives. Be able to snowball that into the rest of your team getting some of that gold. And as you mentioned, they do get that Rift Herald. I wonder where they're going to place it. It does look like Ping's already coming down in mid lane. But trying to just find a place to get some more of that gold into some of these pockets. And especially Kramer's pockets at this point. Yeah, be able to slam some gold, but most importantly as well, open up the map, right? If they can get this tier one, it means that moving towards Drake's going to be much easier for them. Hung yeah. up a flank, but I don't think there's any way RA can actually fight this, because especially since Cult is moving Hung's over, caught. Hung's been caught out. Yeah, he's got a ton of damage on him. Hung's already down. They RA need to get out of there. That Chaos Storm could do it, though. Ah, uh, Quay doesn't go down, but it will be a member of RA falling and LGD continuing to have so much pressure in the mid lane. They're looking at that tech second tier tower as well. Yeah, this is going to be two towers in the mid lane for LGD. Huge swing for them. They are massively building up a gold lead for themselves. And here's the thing. This is a team that I was really not expecting a lot from today. This is a really really positive step forward for them as a yeah. as a team and as an organization because as we said the the odds of them making it to playoffs at this point are incredibly slim but looking towards summer this is a team that you should expect a reasonable amount from like when you think about the names on this team like kramer mm -hmm. is a player that you should expect good play from he's a he's a player with a lot of experience and uniboy showed up at the world yeah. championship had a really fantastic tournament coming from the pcs region and now here in the LPL, it, it's felt like he's been one of the shining lights, in my opinion, for this team. So it, it's good to see that here today, they're stepping up. Colt having a massive performance on the Jace as well. Quay doing a really good job to read what Lian is trying to do. And now they can mm -hmm. contest this trade. Can you imagine what it would mean to be able to take down RA on the verge of their 10th win streak? But they got the fight going in. Chance gets the engagement. Ragnar's already popped. You're already losing Hong. And then the follow-up, the Cyclone on the back line, though Cube is doing huge damage right now, and Quay has to run away. LGD wanted to take the fight, they took the advantage there, but they actually are gonna lose a member, lose some of that presence in front of the Dragon Pit, but it's gonna look like both teams walk away licking their wounds, and LGD take advantage of that and take that Dragon. Yeah, LGD managed to come out on top, and like, look, LGD are ahead in the game right now. You got a Jace that's already got his Eclipse. Like, he's massive. You got the Orianna as well. That's 3, 0, and 2 for Uniboy. We just called out that Uniboy is looking good. And he's able to pull it off during this fight. We can take a closer look at what actually happened here. Because LGD definitely there with Cryo. But Chance comes in with a 3-man Magnet Storm. And already at this point, the fight is basically over, right? LGD yeah. has such a great way to start it off. And Cube comes in. Fantastic ult from him. But unfortunately, the rest of his team has already been forced out of the mm -hmm. fight there. Quay's able to get away with his life there. And at that point, there's nothing left in the tank for RA to be able to continue to contest. So fantastic from LGD. And I'm starting to feel this composition from them. A ton of AOE bursts, a ton of damage yeah, that is. they can follow up if Chance can find these big engages. So RA, they need to be careful about grouping up like that around these objectives because that is where Chance can pop off. You get the shockwave coming through these accelerated shock blasts as well. And then Kramer just blasts a rocket into it. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, even if it's an 03 Jinx, as you said earlier, it's still a Jinx. You still got to be careful. That excitement can definitely come in the heat of the moment for her.
as uh, we'll, we'll see what those next couple team fights lean into for, for both of these squads. But LGD have been so good at this map movement for me. Being able to keep that pressure up on RA, where RA are trying to find where they can take some more gold, where they can find these advantages. And uh, Colt almost gets caught there by Leanne, but not going to. And, and RA finding things on the enemy side of the map. Meanwhile, LGD are all the way on the bot side, looking at that tier two tower. Yeah, LGD now in a position where they can look to snowball things. And I like the change from what we saw last season, the change from what we've seen earlier in this season, where it's no longer about leave Kramer alone on the opposite side of the map and just let him farm up. Now we're grouping up. We're, we're building this league that we've got for ourselves, accelerating the game. It feels like LGD know that they have a huge advantage right now and they can push that forwards. And RA, they're just struggling to get in the game with Kul's Court. Yeah, the casket came out on the cold. Cold had them flash away. The shockwave comes down on the hung. He doesn't go down. The Mega Death Rocket is not going to hit the correct target. LGD are able to back away with some pokes coming down. Iboy has been on the top side this whole time trying to generate some more of that farm, generate some more of that pressure, but it's going to be RA opting into the fight here. They found what? Quay. They found the damage, but they don't have the members. They don't have the bodies available to them. They have everybody else around the map, and LGD capitalize on that chance goes over the wall here quay is going to chase down fofo that stun is going to be nice and the damage to top it all off giving the kill over to kramer and he is excited ltd are bringing it to ra and baron is on the cards now for ltd so ra i think believing that a couple of recalls had finished already and trying to catch stragglers but what they actually did was opt into a three versus five they've fallen apart short they saved the bottom in hit but lgd had already stopped sieging like the play was over it must have been that they were catching stragglers it's the only logical reason i can think of for them to start that <laughs> yeah. fight because there was no way that ra wins that fight if it's a fair one lgd grabbed the baron off of a huge misplay coming out from ra and honestly, a little uh, shocking there from RA, right? And, and I can see that play as you were saying, that's the, the potential that we were thinking, maybe that's what they were going for and, and leaving iBoy to try and take that tier two tower, try to get some of that farm up there for the vein. And that is your win condition, right? That's something we talked about a lot of, but this fight for, for LGD, knowing to turn it around, knowing that the RA were all the way committed to this one. Yeah, you could see the recalls were all coming through, but uh, no, no one had finished the recall yet, right? So <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm not sure if they were trying to buy time for iBoy, maybe, but there was no world where he finishes off a tier two there. So, yeah. Hey, at least iBoy had a bunch of time. During all of that, there are no inhibs that went down for RA. iBoy got some time to farm up. You can see he's got two items now. He's spiking incredibly hard on this vein. In a in a specific circumstance, it's possible that ra find a really good fight and come back the 4000 go down though and look at the composition that we've got from lgd they could quite happily just split into a 4-1 or even a 1-3-1 if iboy wants yeah. to go off on his own he doesn't have tp available right now but you could just force prio with your baron in the mid lane and the bot lane set up for this next drake and put yourself on soul point lgd are in a fantastic position and just look at the comp it's not like they're gonna fall off in the late game with the jinx and an oriana just everything looks beautiful for lgd yeah, absolutely. And that's what is so scary at this point for RA, right? You've needed to find some of these advantages. You've gotten some of those advantages, but you're starting to lose a little bit of that map pressure, that map presence that they've lost a lot of towers, five to two in that respect for LGD coming out on top. And that dragon is started up by the duo of Colt and Quay. It looks like it's just gonna be given over by RA. So that's sole point now for LGD, and that opens up everything for them on the map. It's feeling fantastic for OGD. I'm trying to think what the win conditions could be for RA, right? If if they were to come back in this game, which feels difficult to say the least, um, I think the big opportunity for them would be either A, managing to find a pick somewhere, control a pocket of vision, stack up and, and look for a pick in that regard, which obviously is kind of the classic cheese strat, right? But another way that they can win is in these fights with cube and with hung these massive team fight ultimates that cause so much disruption if you're able to get in as cube get a knock up onto kramer onto uniboy hung can then follow up on the knock up that comes out from cube obviously you can't you can't uh, qss that you can't flash away from yeah. that uh, once you're already knocked up um you can follow up with the explosive cask knock one of those squishy carries into your own backline and just annihilate them so 
trying to get creative in these team fights and using that CC effectively could be an answer. Fofo has the movement speed from his siphon <laughs> power, so he'll be fine. But yeah, I think that or just finding a pick in general is pretty much yeah. the only way that RA can actively contest right now. I feel like the other thing right now has been they haven't been necessarily. <laughs> That's exactly what they're doing, themselves. by the way. Look at them. Yeah, it's up. it literally as yeah, you talk about it. Leon wants to fight though. Just go forward with that stride break. They're not going to find exactly what he wanted to there. But yeah, it's it's RA just trying to find something for themselves in these fights, trying to get these picks out, trying to not take that full on five v five that we've seen not go their way so far in this one. Yeah. So the stack has to uh, be disassembled because. You can see Cult shoving the wave on the bottom side of the map. And this is what we'll see consistently now. Cult will play on the opposite side to his team. Um, you can set up now LGD with a lot of deep vision before the Baron comes up in two minutes. Make sure that you've got complete control of that top side jungle. They can even set up towards the top tier two. Like realistically, I don't think Ray could contest if LGD just shoved that wave and see Uniboy moving up there already. Control this jungle, rotate over, finish the tier two. In the meantime, Cult moves to the mid lane so he can support his team if that mm -hmm. goes on, but he can still pressure one of these lanes. And they really want to get this tier two tower on the top side. It'll be the last tier two here for RA. The last one standing, but RA want to make a defense here. They want to draw a line in the sand and not let LGD open up even more pressure here. And that's, that's for me, that has yeah. been the biggest thing is like LGD have such control over the map anytime they're grouping together, anytime they want to. So the, the problem with the play there from LGD is if they try and sync up the wave in the mid and the top lane, it's much harder for RA to defend. Right now, Fofo can do a lot of work just clearing waves because the Baron is down. I think this should go down eventually, Leah. That's going to be the Ragnarok pop, so it has to pop that one out. But it does mean that LGD get that tower, and that's what they came for. Yeah. So they're able to get it in the end, uh, able to just brute force that one and kind of threaten the fight, say, look, we don't really care about your tower. We will just 5v5 <laughs> you, and RA have to respect that. But on the previous wave, I feel like... It would have been much more difficult for RA to contest that wave had they managed to sync up some pressure with Cult in another lane. But it doesn't matter in the end, they get the tier two and that's what's important. But 45 seconds is when Baron is going to come up and we need to see something from RA. If LGD gets another Baron, I think it might just be game because the, the split pressure we're already seeing from Cult is kind of insane. You can see him with yeah. an almost 60 CS advantage. He's on three items now. This Jace is an absolute terror in the side lane. If you give him a Baron as well, that might just be curtains. So RA, they desperately need to fight for control of this portion of the jungle. You could see them in there with pink wards already, but they've been spotted out. There's a ward hidden away there. There is, and uh, <laughs> you see the things coming down especially, but a lot of, of buying your time right now for RA, right? You're trying to get this gold in some of these pockets. You're trying to get iBoy a little bit further along, get that three item spike for the vein before you're really trying to take that next big fight because right now that damage just hasn't been there. And that's the biggest tell right now for me for RA is they're used to having that damage. They're used to having the follow up there, even if it's chaotic. And right now it's just not there. Yeah, at the very least. We do have three items on iBoy's vein. He's yet to die this game. He's sort of the, the late game insurance policy for RA. If they can get a fight where the front line lasts long enough, Cube and Hung cause enough disruption, and Fofo and iBoy are undisrupted, they might be able to make something happen. The face check into the jungle here. This is dicey. 15 seconds on Mountain Soul, and LGD oh. won it. Yeah, Quay does flash over the wall there. Wanted to try to find out Fofo, but can't do it. It's going to mean that this dragon is the next focus. LGD are already knowing that, already planning ahead and setting up their vision, setting up their control over here, starting up the dragon as well, forcing RA's hand. Land's coming over on the flank here. Do they want to just commit to this? This is Soul. This is the Shockwave on iBoy. That's the casket used. These are tools already down. And LGD have taken the dragon. And Land has to run away now. That is a mountain soul for LGD. They forced the Ragnarok out of Land as well. Oh, and this Baron is Pings well. already going down to the Baron right now, Munchables. So RA, they, they don't really commit, but they commit enough that they end up losing a bunch of cooldowns, which is really, really bad news. That is kind of worst case scenario for RA, aside from just getting aced. LGD now in a position where Lien doesn't have Ragnarok, doesn't have Ghost. They could threaten the Baron, but instead, they've got a huge wave on the top side. Just take an in here. You can see the recalls being channeled on the side of RA. 
And OGD respect it. They are going to recall themselves, but RA's recalls are just cancelled. They are actually going to grab a tier one off of this. They sniff it I out, feel like OGD. Bulls. They could have done that. LGD could have took that top they in. They could yeah. have. Yeah, I completely agree. And honestly, it's really good props to RA to realize, hey, we could take this tower. I feel like that was a bit of a blunder from LGD. Maybe I'm misreading part of this, but canceling the push when you had basically a double wave stacked under the tower, like only cube could have really contested. You can definitely win straight up 5v5. You can burst through that tower with a jinx. I feel like that tower would have very quickly gone down um, and you could have just left after taking the tower but ultimately R8 managed to punish that one and managed to get themselves a mid tier one now Baron on the cars ultimates available for both teams and you know that 4,000 gold lead not feeling as massive as it previously <laughs> did we're 30 minutes into the game and 4,000 ain't cutting it it's not that big of a lead anymore if R8 can operate in these fights yeah, it's those little mechanical moments in these fights that have been so much honestly uniboy's shockwaves have been incredible on the back line especially yep. the last time the iboy wanted to go in they immediately turned around because of the damage coming out from that setup of lgd but here are ra they're setting up for the fight that's the three-man cyclone into the rest of the team they have found the fight if they can get iboy into the damage phase but they don't have the health bars everybody in the front line is gone for ra and lgd are still there but flashing oh, floor is gonna be iboy he tries to take on the world but he got too close to the sun and he will burn as LGD are taking yet another fight and could be looking to shove in this mid lane in him against RA. Beautifully done by LGD and it feels so difficult for Ivoy and Fofo in these fights. They want to get in there and help the team out to the team out but like cube goes in gets a man you got five man ulti to start the fight off but the thing is the rest of the team can't just get in there the zone control offered by uniboy the counter engage from chance as well it's so difficult to get into these fights and it looks like the respect coming out from lgd again I, i'm at a point where i'm feeling like this is too much respect <laughs> from lgd i feel like again they probably could have just ended the game there but they're gonna play it by the book like look they don't have many wins on the board right now. Technically, the playoff dream is still alive if they just turn it on. So I can understand playing it safe. Yeah, as we take a look at that fight there, Colt getting caught out, but he goes golden, buying so much time while everybody in the front line for RA is already in the back trying to knock up, trying to get all that CC down. But iBoy was not able to get into the fight. He was having to be very careful at his positioning and the damage, the gold, the team fight capabilities from LGD really shown through. Yeah, and you could see the combo that we were talking about before, right? Where Cube goes in, Hun can get a knock up or a knock back off of that with his explosive cast. The problem was Cult had a stop watch, right? So yeah. <laughs> you do get the <laughs> knock back onto Cult. You got a pick onto one of these carries that we were talking about. But he just buys enough time that it doesn't matter anyway. Now Uniboy with the double buff, he'll shove out that top side. And the threat on the Baron continues from LGD. RA have to contest and just look for the miracle team fight win. Here we go. It's already gone. I mean, it's already 2,000 health. Leanne can't even get in there. The, the Baron's already taken by Quay. So that means that LGD will look to this mid lane yet again. They've already got a big minion wave. They've already got super minions pushing as well. And LGD right now, yes, they took it a little slow. They only took one of those Nexus towers, but they are choke holding RA right now. Yeah, feels good if you're an LGD fan out there. Um, feels good to see, especially Uniboy. I think Uniboy's having a fantastic yeah. game for himself. His shockwaves have been on point. He's just consistently in the right place at the right time. And even in the early game, we consistently saw him just trying to shove out that mid wave and get towards the top side. They recognized that they had a huge lead on the top side with Cult on this Jace. Him and Quay consistently going for that really great early tower dive that we saw and putting that pressure onto Cube, who... On this Wukong, you know, like with how the early game went, I think he's actually played fine in the grand scheme of this game. He's still been able to get good ult soft during the fight, which is realistically yeah. what you're picking this Wukong for. But now as we get to the, the very late game, with Elder coming up in 45 seconds, RA are out of second chances. They've had all the second chances they're going to get this game, and now it's time to defend. Yeah, you can't necessarily wait for the vein to get a couple more items here. I'm looking for the TP. flank here. They got the TPs coming in. This could be the fight that RA want, but it looks like they're going to be a little bit iffy on that one. As Cube is just in the middle of the oh, fight, no. his health bar is already gone. 
They've lost their front oh, line and they so could good. lose the rest of them as LGD goes forward. But they got a big old Chaos Storm. That's going to be the reactivation of the Cyclone. RA could take this fight, Munchables, but no, but no, Kramer and Uniboy I are boy. making the damage down. I boy I still boy. got the plays, but no, it's Colt going forward. And the man that started it all is going to keep on finishing it. Kramer gets the last kill. He's excited, but LGD have made a statement in this first game. You know, I flamed Kramer earlier and he proves me wrong with this final team fight. But that was maybe the messiest team fight I think I've ever seen. It was so beautiful to start with. <laughs> Chance stops the TP engage from Cube. He stuns him on the spot. They pop his up. They, they pop his GA, and it's like, okay, fantastic, good stuff. Denied the Wukong. But then they forget that he's there. He comes back from GA. It's like, yeah, GA is an item that exists. You didn't get any gold when you killed him, remember? He comes back, gets a five-man knockup, and suddenly it's like, oh my god.